Hey everybody, it's Pastor David, and I wanna to talk to you today about a rumor, or it's really an internet rumor that I see a lot. And it has to do with how the New Testament was put together, right? Uh, we call this canonization. The internet rumor is that the New Testament was edited, right? It was decided upon by one group of grumpy old men who sat around a table, and they got to decide what books were in and what books were out. This is not true. This is totally not true. When books were being copied and distributed by the church, one of the things that was very important was authorship. In other words, people wanted to know who wrote this, right? Were they a reliable witness? And so much of the books that were read and distributed and copied were books that were authored by the disciples or Paul. And later they made an exception for Mark and Luke because they had the approval of the apostles. But at that time, there was also a lot of other books that were floating around, books like The Secret Book of James, or The Gospel of Thomas, or The Apocalypse of Paul, just to name a few. And there were probably were about 50 other Gospels uh, out there by the time the New Testament was canonized. But just like how the Old Testament came together, the New Testament came together because these were the books that were being used heavily by Christians as individuals and uh, globally as a church right? Books of the Bible couldn't be photocopied, right? They couldn't be forwarded by email. They had to be hand copied. So if a book has to be hand copied, and there's a lot of work that's involved in that, which books are you going to hand copy and distribute the most? The books that are reliable, the books that are trustworthy, the books that edify the Christian, that build up the church, right? Books that don't do that, they don't get heavily copied. Plus, let's say the Romans come to your door and they ask you to turn over all of your Christian holy books for burning, which books are you going to give them? Probably the books that you don't care as much about, right? Later, in 367, Athanasius of Alexandria, he, fest he authored the 39th Festal Letter, or the Easter Letter, and in that uh, letter, which was later approved by a council, he listed the same 27 books of the New Testament that we use today. Then later in 382, the Pope got his scribe, a man named Jerome, to transcribe the four Gospels from Latin. Jerome worked on the project for two years, and then the Pope died. And then Jerome decided that he would just continue, and he would do the rest of the book, uh, the rest of the Bible. And that uh, New Testament became known as the Latin Vulgate, which is where we get our word vulgar, which just means common. So this was a Bible for the common person. And... The Latin Vulgate has the same 27 books of the New Testament that we use today. Later in 393, there was a group, a synod of Hippo. They also made a list of 27 canonical books and say it with me, it's the same list that we use today. So suffice it to say that the New Testament developed and evolved over the course of 250 to 300 years of Christian history, which means no one particular person no one particular group decided, uh, there was no one church, there was no one council that decided upon the books that are in the New Testament. It was something that the Christian church over hundreds of years decided, and it is what we use today. Thanks. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.